Oh, hi, Trix. Where you been all day? I was down twice and didn't find you. Oh, boy, don't ask me. What a day I've had. Look at the sign. See how swollen that is? <gasps> did Ralph hit you? He sure did. He did? Oh, not what you think. He threw some socks out of the bedroom door for me to wash, and I missed them. <laughs> <laughs> I left right after he did this morning, you know. You know that dog that Mom has? Oh, you mean Duke had that big collie. Yeah. Well, the dog's been awful sick, and it's worried my mom something terrible. Oh. So oh, I thought the best thing to do, get up early this morning, go over, get the dog, and take him to the veterinarians. Yeah, well, what'd the vet say? Well, he said I had to leave him there, and he'd send me the report. So I said, well, don't send it by mail. Send a special messenger huh? over with it. I don't want Ralph to find it in the mailbox. You know, he hates that dog. Oh. Snaps at him all the time. Mm. Boy, if he knew what I was spending on this dog. Oh, boy. You know what it's costing me, Trix? What? Ten dollars. Ten dollars to examine a dog? Ain't that something? Oh, boy, I went ra- with Ralph the other day when he went to get his checkup at the doctor's. It cost three dollars. <laughs> boy, I'm telling you, kid, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Oh. Hiya, Trix. Hiya. Hiya, Hiya sweetie. What's the matter, Trixie? Don't I get nothing? <laughs> I'm too tired. How do you like that? How do you like that? She's tired. I've been working down the sewer all day long. That's another reason. <laughs> Save your jokes for the butcher. My dinner ready? It's on the stove. It'll be ready in a few minutes. See you later, Alan. Hey, Trix. Hey, Ralph. What? Tell Alice what you told me what happened on the bus today. <laughs> oh, hey, I gotta tell you this. Yeah. I pull up to 58th Street and the guy gets on the bus, see? No sooner does he get inside, he starts running up and down the aisles. And he's yelling, I'm George Washington! I'm George Washington! I'm George Washington! Well, everybody in the bus thinks he's nuts, you know, they're all frightened. He's running around, I'm George Washington! Well, how'd you get rid of him? I yelled out, next stop, Valley Forge, and he got off. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Think fast in these things. Don't let the soup boil over. I gotta go up on the roof for a minute. What are you going up there for? Oh, well, it looks like rain. I gotta get the wash off the line. Hey, see it now, pal. What's up, Ralph? Got a sweet kid there, a sweet kid. <laughs> hey, how about you and me go to Lowy's Theater tonight? We'll see that picture, High Noon. High Noon? I thought you told me you saw that the other night. What do you want to go again for? I got passes. <laughs> You're ready for Bellevue. Uh, nah, I don't want to go to any movies. You know, I ain't been feeling well lately. I didn't tell you, but Alice made me go over to the doctor's and get sort of a checkup, you know, oh. an examination. I went over to that uh, doctor, uh, well, I don't know what his name is, but he did a great job for that Callahan the plumber. Did you hear what he did for Callahan? Well, what'd he do? Huh, he kept him alive until his wife finishes up the payments on the insurance. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Cramden live here? Yeah. Uh, the doctor told me to deliver this report. Oh, I'll take that. Uh, he told me not to give it to anyone else but Mrs. Cramden. I happen to be Mrs. Cramden's husband. Your hand is very dirty. <laughs> well, here's the doctor's report, pal. Well, I hope it's good news, Ralph. You know, to tell you the truth, I hope there's something a little wrong with me. Yeah. I'd like to take a vacation for a couple of days. You know, go down to Paul's Landing or something, go fishing, get some kicks. <laughs> What's the matter? What's the matter, Rob? What's the matter? Get a load of this. Dear Mrs. Cranbourne, in compliance with your request, I'm sending this report by messenger rather than mail, because you said you didn't want your husband to see it. I'm afraid it's bad news. My examination shows that a condition of cerebral monochromia exists. <laughs> this is a rare disease which usually affects only boxes. The first visible signs of the disease will be a falling out of the hair and irritability. There is a tendency for the tongue to turn blue and he'll tire easily. This will be accompanied by chills and he'll spend most of his time near a stove. I have enclosed some pills. Give him one a day and a saucer of warm milk. 
And I suggest you keep him away from your mother as older people may be susceptible to the germs he carries. <laughs> be affectionate. Make him comfortable. And he may live as long as six months. Ah, <laughs> uh, I guess that's it. Six months. I'll be dead by the 4th of July. <laughs> Ralph, Ralph, you listen to me? Don't pay attention to that stuff. I used to work with a guy, the doctor told him he'd be dead in six months, too. Yeah, what happened? He lived for almost eight months. <laughs> you gotta promise me something. What? Never tell Alice that I got this. I don't want her to know anything about this. No, no, I won't, but what's gonna happen after six months? She's gonna notice you're not coming home nights. <laughs> Me getting a disease that foxes get. <laughs> I knew I was a little punchy. Yeah. You know what it is, don't you? It's that pounding I take in the bus every day. Riding up and down, up and down Madison Avenue. Well, Norton, there won't be any more bus rides for me. This is the end of the line. I'm headed for that little bus depot up there in the sky. <laughs> Just a one-way trip with no transfers. <laughs> you know, I never thought I'd check out like this. I haven't even tasted life yet. It's been a, a tough struggle all the way. Real rough sledding. Gee, when I was a kid, I, I started out as a newsboy. Then I got a job in the a and delivering groceries. Then I got out of school and the depression set in. In order to eat, I had to shovel snow. That's how I met Alice. She used to hand out the shovels. <laughs> and then we got married. And I struggled a little more. Finally, I got a job driving the bus, you know. And we struggled a little more. That was 10 years ago, Norton. And we've been struggling ever since. It's a funny thing. I come into this world with strong lungs, weighing 10 pounds, and having pink cheeks. And how am I leaving the world? With a bald head, a blue tongue, and a saucer of milk with a pill in it. <laughs> See you, Rob. Okay, Pat. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, what size bowling shoes do you wear? Why? Well, I just fixed it. I'll talk to you later. Well, I'm back, Ralph. I walk alone. Will you stop singing that song? I will not. If I want to sing that song, I'll sing it from now until the 4th of July. <laughs> okay, sing it then, but don't sing it now. <laughs> what are you doing? Not doing anything. What do you mean you're not doing anything? I'm not doing nothing. I'm just looking at my tongue. What's the matter, Ralph? Don't you feel good? I feel perfectly all right. It just so happens I want to look up my tongue, that's all. Well, then why didn't you get down to the delicatessen? They got a whole window full of them. <laughs> One of these days. One of these days. Pow! Right in the kitchen. <laughs> Sit down, Ralph, and I'll get you dinner. I don't want any dinner. Well, don't you want anything? Well, maybe I'll have something light. Let me have a saucer of milk. A saucer of what? A saucer of milk. And if you don't mind, I'll have it in my bedroom. Wait a minute. Listen, Ralph, I think you're blowing your top. One of these days, they're going to come and take you away. <laughs> That's right, Alice. That's right. One of these days, they're going to come and take me away. 
Won't that make you happy? What are you talking about? Alice, it's time that you and I had a man-to-man -man talk. <laughs> I want to ask you something. If anything should ever happen to me and I should die, would you ever marry another guy? Oh, I don't know. I never gave it much thought. Well, give it a little thought now. Would you marry another guy? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so, Ralph. But the right guy came along and I was a little lonely. <laughs> Who knows? Well, I can't blame you, Alice. You're in the prime of life. I'm on my way out. I can see it all now. I'm dead. You're running around loose. You meet some guy and he's got all the jokes and everything. Two of you hit it off pretty good. Well, one thing leads to another and you get married. And he comes in here, into my apartment to live, with my furniture. And just by luck, he'll be my size. <laughs> and I'll be able to wear that new overcoat I bought. <laughs> Alice, you've got to promise me one thing. What? If I ever die, you'll bury me in my overcoat. <laughs> Look, Ralph, if it'll make you happy, I'll bury you in your bathing suit. Now, listen, what's the matter with you? There's nothing wrong. You're as strong as a horse. I suppose you never saw a dead horse, huh? <laughs> well, now that you mention it, there is a resemblance. Uh, you trying to steam me, Alice? You trying to steam me? All right, you steam me! I tried to save you a little grief and aggravation, but I'm sick and tired of that now. Read that. hysterical at my funeral. Oh, Dad, blue tongue, a saucer of milk. Oh, Ralph, this is a riot. It's a riot, huh? We'll see if it's a riot when you have to finish the payments on the icebox. Oh, Ralph, this is the report from Dr. Morton, the veterinarian. I took Mom's dog over there this morning to have him fixed up and see what was wrong with him. <laughs> Married to the world's number one maniac. <laughs> I love that maniac, Ralph. I love you, sweetie. 